Hello everyone and welcome to this full tutorial on Totem where I'm going to teach you everything from the most basic to the most complex thing you can do with it. I'm Roxy and we have a lot to discuss so let's jump into it. For the good sake of the video and being organized I wrote a script and this video is going to be into four parts. What is Totem? When to use it? Some tips and classic mistakes. Where to use it depending of the four maps? I'm not going to talk about Starstorm. And finally, uh, I'm going to analyze a League 1 clip where 5 totems in a row are perfectly used and that could bring a big difference in competitive games uh, if more people are starting using uh, Scree. So this tutorial will help any player from your first game as Scree or to even League 1 and League, League 2. And uh, how lot legit is my knowledge you may ask? Well, even though I personally don't main Scree, uh, I have Badass with me, which is the best Scree in the world by far in my opinion and I just know uh, not. So let's get starting. What is Totem? Totem is a second ability that Scree has. You should buy it at the beginning for only 135 solo since it can make a big difference for your team and yourself. He has a cooldown of 14 seconds, which is pretty long, so try to use it correctly. A base HP of 600, enough to tank most damage attack early game. A height of 6, enough to block a lot of people. A size of 1.6, uh, this is important because some attack can pass uh, through it, like uh, Leon AA for example, so you need to be aware to move a bit further from in uh, to avoid every attack. Uh, he has a duration of 7 seconds and it get, gets thrown as a railing rift, so use a curved line. Uh, you have 6 upgrades on it. Slow, more HP, height, knockback, cooldown and damage amplification. Since the percentage of each upgrade is going to change throughout the years, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about them. Just go on the wiki and find them or play the game yourself. Which one you should get though? Usually you don't upgrade Totem before mid game or late game because you want to focus on more sustain or uh, damage on so or AA. But like for every nuts, it depends on the game. If a clunk is destroying your team, maybe spending 165 solo for knockback to save them each time is worth it. However, careful, because Khan can counter that buying a uh, reduced export time. So you need to adapt, that is basically how awesome that works, so you need to adapt. The most useful in my opinion and badass one are height, uh, to block the full lane, slow or knockback depending on the situation, and HP to tank a bit more damage late game. Again, play it and get the feeling yourself, we all have really different gameplay styles, so there is not one good answer, and you should be able to adapt depending on your opponent and your own team. So, in what situation should you use Totem? Totem is amazing, it makes a massive difference between a good and a bad Scree player and even in between games. Uh, it's not usually used in competitive but it should be more because Totem can actually make so much. Okay, so there's, more, there's some complex and non-complex way to use Totem, so I'm gonna go through the bunch of lists, showing clips at the same time and uh, trying to point out some uh, tips and advice. So the most obvious, block the road on someone escaping, it's pretty straightforward. You need to put the totem on uh, a position where he has no opportunity to escape from top or bottom. And so he either has to tank the totem, which he will not be able to, or run back and you are obviously following him so he's dead. You can block the enemy to allow your team to escape, this is also pretty basic. By the time they destroy the totem, you are far away and you should be fine. Avoid backup when you are fighting on a 2v2, uh, maybe putting the totem uh, not to escape but to avoid a third enemy to come uh, could be the solution, so you can finish the 2v2 and then escape. Or a 3v2 also work, whatever situation. Set up a jump pad trap, so there is a lot of different jump pad trap that you can do. Uh, I'm going to talk more in details throughout the map because they are all kind of different but uh, it's pretty, you probably know most of them. Uh, tank turret, obviously tank damage, snipe, dynamite, whatever. Stop enemy uh, attacking, so the totem can uh, uh, stop a clock from coming here, a Jimmy, a Scaldius throw on you, whatever. Use the platform to get to a new spot, so you can jump on the totem and jump again. It will allow you to escape some team fight, put up some teleportation uh, new tricks, and save your teammates if they cannot make a jump. Use it to teleport, so like I say, you can teleport behind it, you can teleport underneath it, you can teleport above it. Use it to body block, so the totem Moyu is the perfect uh, height to block most players, 
so uh, it will you to block them and uh, avoid the, the running them to run away. All right, another one will be to separate enemy. So after Jimmy charge or scroll their throw, you can sim simply uh, separate them or even just a jump pad. Uh, by doing that, you don't use the totem to uh, tank anything. You just want uh, them to be a bit apart so you can uh, focus the damage only on one person instead of two. Clear mine. There's multiple ways to clear mine. Uh, if they're not bouncing, just jump on it. If they're bouncing, you need to be careful because uh, sometimes your totem will only tank two instead of three or only one instead of two, so try to get the good timing. Uh, mine also have a radius of explosion, so um, avoid being hit uh, while putting your totem. You can go from above or on different platform and different uh, side, so you need to figure that out. Separate a trap pretty obvious, uh, either while being invisible, or when they are defending, or just when you are fighting. A block pass to the push, so like I explained before, when you are pushing, uh, you should be aware of the jungle and uh, trying to avoid uh, an enemy coming from behind or from top, so putting the totem will make that uh, situation, allowing one of your teammates to push with you instead of just being in the jungle. Uh, win 1v1, uh, totem is amazing in 1v1 or fight because you can just go right and left while the enemy has to go around or above, meaning that you can easily juke and make a shit ton of damage. So following on that, juking the air with it. Obviously, uh, by going above on the right left, you have so much option that it's uh, amazing. Depending on the upgrade, if you got slow damage knockback, you have different tricks that you can do. Uh, you can uh, obviously defend yourself, slow them, uh, use it more often, get more damage so they don't respect that, and most importantly, uh, move them out of position using a combination of height and knockback. Uh, you need to realize also that uh, knockback and a height combine make the knockback uh, has more effect. So uh, you can uh, create those kind of uh, traps. On the clip that you saw, uh, you will need obviously a scolder, uh, a good teammate, or even like just a snap to then catch up on the opportunity and uh, concretize with a kill. So I'm going to talk about some quick tips now. Uh, people tend to jump above it to try to pass, uh, it's a mistake because they obviously cannot, if it's a good totem it will block the full way, so then uh, the idea is to put the saw on the top of the totem since that's where most people uh, naturally jump on. Uh, it's, I don't know why they do that but it's just a fact. So put the saw on the top of the totem and you will uh, be able to deal more damage. People tend to think they can tank it, uh, it's, it's wrong, you cannot tank a uh, totem early game, it's 600 damage, except if you didn't use any of your skills in the team fight, you cannot tank it, you cannot destroy it. So instead of just trying to push it with your AA while we make damage to you, uh, you should go uh, around another way, jumping up, going toward us, whatever, just do not, do not try to tank it because you will probably die. Uh, there's a bug, there's a lot of bugs uh, with uh, the totem, uh, you need to know about it, it's fine, it's only if the totem is exactly placed between a person and a turret, then uh, the totem will also go on the right of that turret or on the bottom. Uh, this has been explained by Silio in one of his videos and has not been fixed by Ronimo yet, but we can understand that since they have a lot of work and it's a small uh, team. So it's not a big deal, it doesn't happen that often and uh, you shouldn't uh, make the full game out of it. When not to use totem? So I can see a lot of bad totem being used quite often. If a platform is near, then don't use it because they can go underneath it and then your totem is pointless and for no reason. A lot of players just use totem for no reason. Uh, that is bad, just use it and keep it in case you need it. You don't have to use your skills every single time you have it. You need to understand that there is the time and appropriate moment to use every skills. And for the totem, it's mostly what I've uh, talked about above. So don't just don't waste it in the middle of uh, the map. Uh, try to keep it for a good situation, even though sometimes those situations don't happen that often and you end up not using totem that often. If you really see that you never use totem, use it to tank damage 
and uh, try to get more push. But as always, stay safe if you use Totem to engage in the push as you don't have any defensive uh, option. You should uh, not use it to tank the turret uh, if you are alone. So basically, if you get a wipe, you can use the totem to tank turret immediately after because by the time they come back, 17, uh, 14 seconds would have passed and you have totem again to block. But if it's not a wipe, if you're just pushing a turret, you use the totem to tank some damage, it gets destroyed and then the enemy team jump on you, you have no defense option. You have no move to escape and your totem is just wasted. So try to save it. Uh, while uh, waiting for the enemy team to come and defend then only use the totem either to block them if you have more level power and everything and kill them or uh, to escape uh, if you push the bottom lane alone on AA station is the most uh, efficient way to explain do not waste totem tanking the turret again or just wasting for no reason because then when the enemy team is going to drop on you which is most likely to happen uh, you have no way to juke, teleport, uh, or tank damage. So just push a tiny bit, stay in the mid, don't overextend, and keep the totem to um, escape. That is it for how to use totem tips and mistakes. Now I'm going to talk about uh, the four different maps. Uh, so all the maps except Starstorm. And we're going to start with Revit. So I'm going to go basically uh, through a logical order of the map. A lot of totem are self-explanatory, so I don't have to explain. Blocking a full lane in the jungle is blocking a full lane. Putting in in the middle allow you to block full lane at a time, which is pretty convenient. Any, more, uh, any totem that blocks the lane is a good one, kind of. If there is platform underneath, careful that there is any enemy team cannot use it. So now I'm going to talk about the first jump pad trip. By putting his totem here and then taking jump pad, Badass simulate the fact that he left, the enemy is going to come, take the jump pad, uh, the totem is blocking him, Badass can just put the cell and deal a lot of damage. You can even use that during a team fight if you just put the totem at the bottom while the enemy team is trying to escape up top. If you put the totem at that spot uh, and someone is taking the jump pad, it's going to be stopped by the totem, you can go down, put your cell and deal a lot of damage. And let you imagine what happened when the full team is with you ganking that same person that got blocked. So obviously when you take the jump pad you can stop at any moment and that allow you to trap uh, the enemy on either the bottom part or the top part of the jungle with a good totem. So it's pretty easy, you just have to stop and throw a totem. Uh, when you push top lane, by taking the jump pad or stopping in mid air, you can throw the totem at the enemy turret and block the en enemy team to escape. This is quite useful if they are out of position and you just want to gank someone with your, your team. Obviously, if they are defending too much, don't forget that technique is still available. Alright, once the turret is down, you can use the spot of the X turret to put your totem and block the lane for anyone to escape or retreat. Uh, from that part, if you want to attack, you can sneak him from above, drop behind him, put the totem, and body block them. Uh, people usually forget that you are still above them, so it's quite convenient and can be a deadly trap. The platform here can be used to juke and uh, survive uh, if you need to escape. Also, uh, save your teammates. So, for example, I was going to chase Tulip, I got literally stopped. If you put it just a bit on the left, then it changed the whole purpose of the totem because now Scoop can no longer go into the jungle, but you can, like, you can always, but like he's fully blocked on the left. Well, before he could have still like jumped up. Obviously, uh, blocking the path to the bottom uh, turret is quite useful. For the solo boss, you can block the damage, uh, enable an enemy to escape, or simply uh, kill it. Uh, when uh, people are fighting near that zone, uh, you usually tend to like go help them if you're a good teammate and in that case you can use the totem to block them or escape. On the occurrence here it's a teleportation but it's uh, it's pretty useful. Also don't forget that the AA of Leon can go through the totem as uh, some other not so AA. So using that one uh, you, it allows you to tank a bit of damage from the turret and also make sure no one co it's coming from the jungle, as I explained before. By placing a totem uh, where the dead turret is, it allows you to break the full lane, which is quite convenient to teleport, uh, to block, to make a trap uh, if the uh, enemy team is pushing your turret. Uh, putting a totem here when you are defending uh, is good because it blocks the enemy between the turret and the totem. However, if you place it a tiny bit more on the right, uh, well, 
you enable the enemy team to make a jump of it because there's no platform to like step all those one are like in the base it's self-explanatory it's just blocking a lane it's quite easy for the next uh, map i will not explain any totem that are just blocking lanes i will focus mainly on the important one because you get the idea that a dead turret mean uh, a blocking path and a platform that enable to go to any type of any part of the jungle are like good totem so now let's talk about Serona. Serona doesn't have a lot, so let's go quick. Uh, if someone is following on your worm, you can put a totem. By the time he goes on the opposite way, you can eat him. Uh, when you're on the top uh, part of the jungle, a totem here will enable most nodes to jump over it, trapping them. In the jungle, so if you put it here, it's a good totem because it blocks a full path. They cannot take the platform down and they cannot, they cannot go up. On the bad totem we saw earlier today, well, uh, he can go anywhere. Here it's another good one, he blocked the full lane, so now I have to go back. If it was in the middle, it was kind of pointless. So back at the top jumble now, if you put a totem here, you enable the enemy team to go toward their blue platform, so you have more time to kill them. Putting a totem here will uh, kind of clear up the top uh, lane, keep someone want to gank you, and maybe tank some turret damage. Uh, when you fight on that part of the map, putting your totem on the left will block. Uh, you need a higher totem to block on the lower staircase. And uh, because he's trapped, he has to go all the way around and you can kill it in the between. So now we're going to talk about the jump at tricks. So there's two in Serona. The first one is by putting the totem a bit more on the right than the platform. So not, not exactly on it, but a bit on the right. It will enable uh, any player to either take the jump pad orienting right to do like the trick to uh, get into the middle or if they want to go up because that's the only option they have right now they will have to slide up uh, the totem and get uh, on the upper part of uh, the left, left side which is again enabling them to go back in the middle uh, and when you take the jump pad here, uh, you can see that by putting a totem and then body blocking uh, that we will be propulsed on the top and uh, that's usually enough time to uh, have a good follow-up with your teammates or something like that. That is it for Serona, let's jump into Ageon. So first it's important to notice that the platform are different in Ageon than Rabbit. So if you put a totem on it, it's not large enough uh, to cover the whole platform so people can go down. So it's not a good idea to put a totem on the platform. Instead, you should put it a bit on the left and try to body block on top. Uh, by doing that, you enable uh, a full access to the platform before it can happen and body blocking is a great way to win. So this totem is pretty deadly since you can uh, body, you can trap someone and he's almost guaranteed to die. One of the only ways to escape is to run left or uh, manage the way to push out a uh, scree before he body block you. For example, he has to do a beautiful job on throwing a badass. So now I'm going to talk about the jump at chip. So it's probably the most famous one. You put the totem, go down, put the saw, and the person is trapped almost forever. So uh, it usually uh, requires some timing and some training to do that one. It's not easy to anticipate whenever someone is coming, check minimap, sometimes you're gonna fail, it's fine, sometimes he's gonna survive, so your teammate has to finish the kill, it's fine, you should call for help. Uh, you can also use that in order to teleport. Uh, it's a teleport that few people know, but it's quite uh, handy. And uh, obviously you can trap the entire team, they just have to destroy the totem to escape, but it's not easy. And finally, as you can see right now, the, that trick is so useful if you can bait people in or just trap them while they're following you. It's a great way to win a 1v1. Just keep totem and go there, they will follow you, you get the kill. Free one. So you're in the bottom, he can see the frog. With the totem on bottom, it's a different situation since it blocked the full lane. So now it can be used to save teammate, escape and juke. So on the bottom lane, you can use it. Still in the bottom lane, there's a, a small trick. Since the totem is too high for the hiding area, if you use it, it will get up a tiny bit, which will enable any nodes to walk. They will need to jump. So if you push, you can easily put the totem here to like fuck up with them a bit. So they have to jump and you can body block and just use the saw. And by the time they realize what's going on, uh, you have time to escape. So obviously, you can always use the totem to uh, 
enable someone to take jumper to follow you, that's a classic one. When you're in that area, a good totem placed here uh, will enable the team to follow you. You can also use it in order to trap people and deal more damage. So for example here, the Lone Star thinks he has a chance, but I'm Badass is putting the totem more on the right, so he's trapped uh, in the solid area. Uh, those are like four random totem that would obviously block the lane. As we all know, Agion can make you invisible, so it's great to make trap. Just use the totem. He cannot jump above if you body block. If you have slow, he will not be able to jump above either way. So you just get an easy kill. Speaking of slow, on that map, if you had slow, uh, it enabled most players to make like stupid jump, like that one. Uh, it's really frustrating and it's quite efficient. So when you're gonna defend, obviously you can body block and use the totem as a base. If you're gonna attack, same scenario as last uh, map, uh, use it to avoid an attack even though you're like on the opposite side of the turret, it's fine. It's just a time reaction on how fast can you anticipate an attack. There's two more points we didn't talk about. First of all, a good totem here will 100% block an enemy from backing up after pushing a turret since Scoop cannot make that jump, for example, and other nodes can't. And uh, speaking of jump that you cannot make, if you put a totem in the middle of uh, the bottom jungle, uh, you will enable your team to jump on the totem to then jump on the middle map, middle area of the map, which could lead to an escape uh, if they are trapped. Uh, that is it for Aegeon, uh, there's a lot of other small totems but those are the main and so let's jump into the last uh, map, uh, AA Station. So obviously for AA Station I don't have to say again that if the turret is down, put the totem there, it's blocking the full lane, enable any escape, trap, wipe, uh, massive team play, uh, uh, follow up. Like there's so many that you can do by just putting a totem here, I think uh, I'm gonna pass on that. So, actually I still have one clip, so let's just look at it. Yeah, so like you're trapped, you're gonna try to escape, people tend to jump on it because they're stupid, let's do it. So obviously that totem enable the enemy team to jump, the other are just classic totem. So if you put it straight, straight up on the edge, they don't have any platform to make a double jump, so it's better than putting it in the middle where they can jump once and then jump again a second time to go over it. So now let's talk about the jump pad trips. So obviously there's three jump pads, so plenty. If you put the totem here, it will propulse uh, any enemy that take uh, the two jump pads that go on the right toward your turret. So it can be useful if someone is following you and you just want to like fuck him up or uh, if you are trying to defend and uh, you think that they're gonna take the jump pad and start to like bother them a bit. When they come back, uh, they don't have a lot of options since uh, both jump pad are blocked. That's an in-game one, so obviously uh, we won the attack and it was full life, so it doesn't lead to any follow-up, but it could be useful in a lot of situations. Obviously putting a totem on it will enable them to go up, so it's quite convenient. Then there's that one. So. By taking the jump pad, doing a little twist twist and putting the totem, you're gonna put it exactly on the platform. That's the little twist twist I'm talking about. Because you need to like go a tiny bit on the left and then go back on the right to put it like perfectly. So by doing that, uh, it's a really fast totem because you're like already moving, you don't lose any speed and it blocks the full pass. Uh, they don't have any platform to use their skill to make a double jump, so they need to go down and you usually have time to escape. On that one, for example, uh, you can see that the totem is not on the platform, so they can like have a solid ground and push it uh, in a better way. Okay, the next, the next one is really, really important because it will allow you to defend and push and follow up on kills so easily. So basically, you take the jump pad and mid hair, you throw the totem and it has to land exactly in between the platform and the wall to enable any escape. It's one of the hardest totems Kree has, uh, but as does miss it sometimes. Uh, but if you can do it, then anytime you follow someone and they take the jump pad, instead of them escaping and throwing a shitty totem near the turret, you will block them before. Uh, so it's really convenient, you need to learn it, take the jump pad, throw it midair, and if you can land that totem, uh, you can do some crazy follow up and just uh, enable enemy to escape in a really efficient way in AI station. Probably the most used uh, out of all with Aegeon. Obviously you can put the totem to fuck up some turret, uh, it's not really useful except maybe allowing you to get a bit, to get a bit closer and annoy enemy team. So here you can see that Alberto Giro, a really good screen, uh, wasted his totem pushing, so for what, half a bar, whatever, and now he's back at the bottom, 
uh, he, the Lonista is out of position, but he doesn't have Totem to block him to confirm the kill. He should have kept Totem uh, instead of wasting it on the push and then use it to uh, kill uh, Lone. No, when he had Totem back, he used it on the right instead of maybe if the cool one was right, using it uh, as a defense option uh, to make sure. Alright, uh, that is almost it. Uh, that's a funny clip uh, that we, we had. Uh, so as Kree, you can just teleport there, no one will ever fuck you if they don't have a range attack. So that is it for the full map, so I hope you learned something. Let's not now uh, talk about some a quick League 1 uh, gameplay to analyze for totem and if what I said it was right. So now we're in a team fight. he put the totem on a dead turret, Yuri is blocked, and now going uh, the Kizinia to pull help and uh, Nikki to pull help. Take some HP. So now we move forward, it's a 2v1 versus Nikki. The idea here is to block uh, the escape, so play for the turret, he's blocked by the totem, he knows he cannot tank it, so we can get the kill. No uh, cooldown on turret, so we have to do it ourselves, I get the kill. So now we can push up top. He has the cooldown again, but if he wastes it now, we have no defense when Yuri is going to come back. So you don't waste it, you wait for Yuri. The slow fucked us up, the slow on bubble fucked us up, so I died, but then the turret uh, blocked the damage and they got the kill on Yuri. So now they know that Skuldia is going to be back in around like 4 seconds. So he's waiting the saw and cooldown of Totem. He can use the saw. He's not going to fight because he has solo and it's just not a good idea. So he put the Totem to both back up in safety position. No need to put it on the platform since no one is really following up. But if people were going to follow up, that platform, as I said, would be better since it uh, enabled them to have a platform where to stand. That is it for the Totem tutorial. God damn, it was long. Uh, how hope you learned something. I tried to make it as complete as possible. That's why he is uh, 26 minutes long. Um, obviously, all those Totem has to be adapted depending on the gameplay, uh, the team, the comp and everything, but you get a pretty good idea of what Totem could bring you into a game. Uh, I hope you really liked it, please tell me what you think in the comment section, uh, your feedback are going to be really important for the continuation of this channel, to know if I should do more longer video like that, should I divide them into more different sim, uh, and uh, if I should uh, keep the same format or what. Uh, so please like the video, it will really make a difference for me. Subscribe if you haven't. My name is Roxy, I make uh, awesome next montage once a week. Full game, uh, short tutorial, longer tutorial. Um, I want to thank uh, Badass uh, for helping me throughout this video. And uh, any other person I took clips or that helped me uh, in the process. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, stay awesome. See you in game, bye.